Сегодня поговорим про читинг и методы, методы борьбы с ним. Вот, с утра уже мы немножко здесь немножко почитили. Очень... Большая очередь была мы решили, что мы не будем стоять в очереди и пройдем, иначе мы просто не успеем к этому докладу. Сегодня наш доклад, мы расскажем о том, какой мы античин разработали для защиты онлайн-игр, таких как Unreal Tournament. Мы разработали защиту против мощных коммерческих античитов, для, которые существуют для ряда популярных игр, такие как Battlefield, Unreal Tournament, GTA. И мы расскажем, как мы пришли к этой идее, какие плюсы, какие минусы нашей защиты. К сожалению, мы не можем сказать имя читмейкера, этого читмейкера, из юридических соображений лицензию нам это надает сделать. Но, а те люди, которые этим заинтересуются вопросом, не будет сложно, не будет сложно найти. В terms and conditions, however, if you're interested, it will not be very difficult for you to find those cheats. Почему же люди любят Why do people love cheating? Uh, cheating comes in different flavors, in different areas of our life. Some uh, athletes, for the sake of uh, big money, dope themselves with performance enhancing drugs. Явные преимущества в игре. Это может быть, чтобы увидеть противников через стену, чтобы поменять параметры компьютерной игры, бесконечное количество жизни, денег, патронов и прочее. Поднимите руки те, кто когда-либо использовал четыре в компьютерных играх. Сколько за вот. Почти. Статистика, кстати, говорит о том, что в России и Украине высокий уровень читинга в онлайн-играх. То есть читинг в разных, для разных целей используется, на самом деле, и для веселья, и для того, чтобы заработать деньги в любительских или профессиональных турниров и спорта. С другой стороны, есть люди, которые заинтересованы в справедливости в игре. И они читингом очень активно. И они делают читинг. Я хочу сказать, что читинг... Что я имею в виду, что читинг... Читмейкеры... Shit makers earn quite a lot of money, around one million US dollars per year. And some of those earnings are uh, reinvested in the development of new uh, cheating software uh, to uh, compete versus uh, new anti-cheating software products. Both developers and publishers of games are будет страдать от читерства, никто не согласится платить за месячные подписки, как это было, допустим, в Sims Online.
Let's uh, consider several examples. Examples of cheats for popular online games, such as the World of Tanks. Uh, the developer of War uh, Gaming created a dedicated directory for uh, modified files, which include binary files for scripts, textures, In one way or uh, the other, the developer encourages uh, the developers to develop such things in order to find out about user experiences. In order to improve the client side, the developer GUIs for hangers. Uh, to be able to see information about allies and foes uh, to analyze combat. On the other hand, there are uh, forbidden modifications for which tankers may be banned. For example, textures that allow to identify vulnerable uh, tank modules in order to make it easier uh, fighting the foe, fighting the enemy. Another example is a cheat for uh, the removal of or uh, bushes here, uh, the tanker in the tank believes that he is well protected. However, he is 100% exposed. And this is the uh, second screenshot, the way it looks like, it looks the way it should. You cannot see uh, the enemy. Another modification is a script that allows reloading tanks, guns, uh, repair uh, tanks on the fly. Another. And here you can see cheating a product for uh, the Call of Duty. It is commercial uh, product. And uh, we developed an anti-cheating methodology for it. It is a commercial uh, cheating software uh, that allows to aim at enemies' uh, personnel or equipment automatically. You can use 2D or 3D radars. Uh, you can see uh, enemy troops behind walls. Oh uh, well, and uh, uh, the enemy's troops are depicted in those squares here on the screen. For you to understand. Для нас это было серьезно, списка 
списке мы не нашли нашу компанию, поэтому мы могли продолжать работу. Что же может чит вообще? Ну, два подхода есть основных. Это вкратце это работа на локальной машине и работа на сервере. Совершенно два разных подхода, они могут быть комбинированы. They are uh, two different approaches, although uh, they uh, can be combined. For some reason, in a game, uh, you're in no position to use both, uh, but they are independent. If you're working on a local machine, well, there are lots of methods to modify the gaming system. <laughs> Это не время, как бы, да, то есть мы выпустили античит, его можно поанализировать, потом понять, как с ним бороться. По сути, основной минус таких а, решений, самая, так скажем, слабая точка, это то, что атакующий, ну, игрок, он, в общем, заинтересован, чтобы читить. То есть он владелец системы, то, что он владелец системы, это решает многое. Он более охотно будет давать разрешение на админские права для э, чита, может быть, какие-то действия делать необычные, ставить какие-то версии системы. Если чит работает на сервере, казалось бы, он ну, решен таких недостатков. У него принципиально другие методы работы. Но основной минус такой, что он не имеет доступа к локальной машине. То есть в локальной машине можно делать все. Не существует вот из этих методов какого-то стопроцентного защищенного режима работы игры. Никто не может дать гарантию. Ну, такой пример такого из спорта. Кто есть такой новый допинг на букву М, который в велоспорте, не то что... Enhancement drug, its name starts from the letter M, and has been uh, discussed for a while. Some time ago, uh, bicycle uh, riders were accused for using motors on their bikes. I uh, tried to find out how much uh, such a concealed motor with a battery would cost. Well, everything is 100% concealed. You will not see it on the bike with control button on the steering handle. What kind of lessons can we draw from that? Some time ago, a, a press release was published by uh, the International uh, Bicyclist Union about Нет теперь надежного способа, как изучить читера. Читера обошли какой-то способ. А, стоит ли доверять вообще вот, ну, решениям, которые применяют, да? То есть стоит ли они там? Uh, trust the solutions that are uh, used, such as the server solution for uh, cheating software. Are those server-based uh, solutions really secure, allowing to aggregate information? What does the server do? It collects the user stats. Uh, it can compare uh, game results. It can compare uh, gamers, their statistics, deviations from their typical stats. Uh, well, it cannot be broken. A server-based uh, cheating software uh, cannot be broken, because for this you need to crack uh, the server itself. The worst point here. Читить, когда это нужно, там убить основного противника, а в остальное время играть как обычно. Статистика такого не поймает, и локально вы можете делать все, что хотите. Да, то есть читы, которые убирают стены, убирают, а, показывают, где другие игроки сидят, они все еще возможны. 
меня такой пример был, вот знакомый мой один играет дома в какую-то игру, его недавно забанили. Причина оказалась простая. В его аккаунт садился иногда сын, играл, и статистика показала, что совершенно разная игра. Сын играл лучше, он получил бан в итоге. Он был очень недоволен, готов был отказаться от игры, перейти на другой сервер. Но, по сути, это потери для а, того, того баблишера, который продавал ему аккаунт. Ну, что можно сказать про читы, которые локально работают? Они могут многое, если вы им позволите это делать, да? Ну, самое простое, это как бы они сканируют систему. The simplest approach is about the scanning the system. I am always afraid of uh, such things. When I'm playing, I don't want my system to be scanned. And it does not only scare me. Uh, well, uh, all those cheating products, they uh, make screenshots, which I don't like. I uh, was interested in exploring uh, how uh, one uh, pretty old uh, cheating product uh, worked. At a certain point of time, antivirus software uh, started identifying it as a virus. So uh, what did they do? They uh, declared that they uh, were uh, antivirus software themselves. Uh, they uh, said, just delete all the other uh, antivirus products and uh, use us. The biggest challenge for uh, local cheating products uh, is um, getting access to personal data, which are to be protected by uh, various uh, licensing terms and agreements. We are not keen about moving in this direction. In our work, we started from analyzing simple cheats, such as art. change the coding line on the server. Then uh, we engaged in considering exploring more advanced uh, cheating products for specific games, allowing the gamer uh, to have advantages that uh, the other players cannot have. They grant access to normal concealed data. We have analyzed uh, the cheat for uh, one uh, shooter that features a name bot, allows locating enemy uh, troops. On this slide you can see the cheat the way it is seen by the user. You can see uh, where the enemy troops are, uh, their names, distances, their status, other uh, objects such as first aid kits, weapons, rounds, and so on and so forth. On top of that, it features 
automated shooting. You can set it up in such a way as to make it shoot automatically, aiming uh, at enemy troops' hands. You can do nothing, and it will be doing everything on its own, uh, killing uh, enemy troops. We decided to explore it. To understand it, we used POSIS monitor, but we found out that Cheat was using anti-debugging. And every time POSIS monitor was used, uh, the uh, cheating software uh, would uh, identify it and shut down. Except for the fact that uh, it was dependent on kernel uh, 32.dll. Then we try to analyze the memory. Uh, the memory of the game uh, with connected uh, cheat. We found out that there would be file uh, variable pointing at the uh, cheat's exit file on the disk. Uh, but unfortunately, we uh, found nothing specific or uh, useful. We also uh, compared memory dumps with uh, with cheat and without it. We uh, looked for uh, the differences in the editor with the use of template, and we found out that uh, most of the uh, differences were uh, in uh, relocation sections only, which was in line uh, with normal behavior. Proceeding from the results, we uh, uh, understood that uh, the cheat was using traditional uh, code intrusion method uh, that works in the following way. The cheat is launched on behalf of the administrator. Is included in the game, requests memory in the process of playing records some code into the memory and uh, asks the game to execute it. As a result, uh, we uh, are playing a game with cheats incorporated in it. We decided to protect ourselves against that cheat in the following way. First, uh, we decided to add something to the executable memory. Should the cheat be uh, introduced, it means that it will change uh, We uh, were checking their uh, integrity in the process of uh, playing every five seconds. However, uh, we did not find any uh, modifications. The integrity was uh, intact, at least in the memory that we um, uh, subscribed, which meant that either the cheat was working differently or that uh, it was capable of restoring those uh, sections of memory after uh, penetration. Which led us to another idea. Uh, we decided to find out how the cheat uh, was getting access to the required data. Uh, we uh, took a debugger and decided to change the name of the game in the memory, which affected the information displayed uh, by the cheat. We found out that at least the names of the players of the gamers were not stored by it. After that, we uh, decided to change uh, the sequence of fields in the class, and we found out that it affected the behavior of the cheat. It would stop working. Then we decided to encrypt those critical data in order uh, not to allow uh, the cheating software to understand them and to display them.
and we see nobody here. We engaged in a short study uh, to understand how uh, much of the uh, data uh, should be encrypted uh, to uh, make uh, the cheating software stop working. And we found out that at least the coordinates of the gamer's camera uh, should be encrypted. We also encrypted the coordinates of the camera. And after several attempts to overcome the chip, I was banned. The cheat, uh, cheating software was installed on my machine, and uh, we thought that uh, we uh, were threatened. Or we decided to ask for the reason of being banned at the forum. On the next day, I came to the forum, but I uh, did not find the topic with my question. Then I tried to uh, start the cheating software and I found it working, which means that uh, I had been unbound in the same way I had been bound. After that, uh, a colleague of mine decided to uh, install uh, the chip on his machine, and he was bound. of the methodology is in that if in the original version the game had direct access to the critical data then now we have loaded the game and uh, the game started to gain access uh, to data through the uh, trusted codes called trusted integrity verification module so the game can't get the data unless it's corrupt, well, if it's corrupted. And if somebody has corrupted it, such as art money, then the trusted code informs the games about it. Now, more details about how this schematic works. In this case, the code is not encrypted, which It informs the trusted code what it's going to do, either to update the code in the memory or just to read. At step two, the trusted code has to verify who has called it, what the calling function was. To, to do this, uh, we need to sign the game using special tools where we can see uh, where uh, the return address belongs, which range. And if it is indeed the game's calling game, yes, we can protest uh, the request. Otherwise, it could be just cheat and we say, sorry, but no. Now, once we've verified that it was a game function that called us, we start verifying the date integrity in the memory using the key the integrity hasn't been compromised, we start executing the request. It is either to return the data if it's about a read or to sign new data and write it back into memory if uh, it's in the case of write. Uh, to protect the key that's embedded into the trusted code, we recommend to obfuscate it. Uh, 
предотвращает тайтеринг бинарей изменений бинарников, также реверс инжиниринг предотвратить. Следующее по этой схеме я хотел бы сказать, что The next comment about this method is that this method protects the game uh, from the simple from a simple cheat such as art money. If art money goes here, then the trusted codes will see the changes and will inform the game about it. The second schematic shows the operation of the method where we are encrypting the data. Here we use the key to encrypt and decrypt critical data in the memory. The difference uh, from the previous schematic is that trusted code uh, is responsible for encryption here because in the first case it was only responsible for uh, signing. It also obfuscates uh, the code that has uh, verified the code that has called it. And uh, we also recommend to obfuscate the key. And this method allows protecting the game uh, from advanced commercial cheats. And we're further going to show you a, a video uh, how the game is used with a cheat and how it can be protected by our anti-cheat. The first and second method can be combined so as to protect yourselves from any kinds of tampering of data in the memory. The pros and cons of our anti-cheat method. Of the pros, I'd like to note that there are factors, like for instance, the valve uh, advanced anti-cheat, sometimes banned uh, valve anti-cheats, sometimes banned those players who were not to blame. Our method does not con conflict uh, with, antivirus, with the antivirus, then we do not uh, infringe on the confidentiality of the games. Of the minuses, I'd like to note the requirement for the refactoring of the game. Uh, implementation is needed, integration of the cheat, and obfuscation, uh, signing of some function that interact directly with the module. Uh, we have made our implementation of the end sheet using the Intel tools for obfuscation and compilation. Uh, we succeeded and uh, we brought it to the situation that the cheat stopped working. We understand that software protection is not so reliable because it works in the same domain as the user and the hacker. So we were uh, developing this uh, methodology, considering uh, that modern hardware uh, already protects hardware-based uh, security methods, and that relates both to Intel CPUs and uh, ARM. They're quite uh, accessible, but the problem is uh, that users uh, are worried to get the latest model of the uh, GPU rather than CPU. So maybe in the future, our methodology may be applied uh, maybe um, extended uh, to hardware support, it fits it very well. Our understanding that the software uh, that the anti-cheat uh, contains is only a part uh, of the overall uh, cheat fighting strategy. Uh, it makes sense uh, to take care that uh, game developers uh, should follow certain rules and recommendations and make cheat safe uh, engines, something similar to secure coding for a regular developer. Thank you very much for your attention. We are about to show you the video, perhaps the most exciting part of the presentation. So this is uh, the first version of the video. When uh, the game uh, happens uh, with a cheat that's up, it's not protected, it's just for you to compare as a benchmark.
Uh, sorry, mistake. Uh, it's a version. Uh, it's a protected version. Sorry about that. Let me go back to the unprotected one. So we're killed, killed too often. No, not that. Sorry. And now uh, you're going to see a chief protected version. As you can see, uh, the radar is empty. These are artifacts. Uh, some remains of the chief are still in the game. So uh, that's it. Welcome. Welcome for questions, please. Please use the microphones. Thank you very much for the presentation. Have you seen the Blizzard games? How protected are they? No, we haven't. As far as I remember, Blizzard. There's a thing that uh, we haven't uh, talked about. It's called Battle.net. They recently had a row saying they start asking of users, uh, asking real IDs of users to make it so that their game account should match uh, their you know, physical address and the real person. They started very actively to push this. And then uh, there was a row uh, that one of the employees said, it doesn't matter, I can assign an address to anyone. And immediately all the information about them became available to everyone, where he lives, where he goes for shopping. No, we didn't look at Blizzard. They have some social engineering in their cheats, in addition to what I've said. They try uh, to understand using your friends, who your friends are, if you're a cheater or not. If you're a cheater, uh, then perhaps uh, you carry a higher risk. Protections are basically the same with everyone, both server side and local side. Uh, the methods and approaches are not very much different. Everybody knows that. Thank you very much. You mentioned uh, hardware protection methods, and you mentioned that there are already some in existence. Did you mean the enclave-based system uh, that Intel is now uh, implementing? I forget the code name or marketing name, or did you mean something different? Well, ARM, um, as far as I know, has a system. I forget the name. Yes, Intel has enclaves, the so-called enclaves. Uh, the marketing name is different. Uh, so what's your specific question? Yeah, you can use that. Why not? This is memory protection and execution. And TPM, is it applicable? What? TPM, uh, trust buffer model. I don't think uh, that it has simple and easy public access. 
uh, compared to Enclave. What do you mean? All the specifications are open. You have to understand that we want uh, to replace, uh, let's say, software obfuscation by some hardware uh, mechanism. TPM uh, has executable code, uh, VM, such as management engine, but I guess uh, it's not an easy thing to get access to it. I mean, for a developer of an anti-cheat. So, explicitly no. For encryption, perhaps some of the things could be uh, used, but I don't think that there's going to be much uh, more uh, secure than software-based uh, uh, methodology based on obfuscation. You have to understand that uh, people who cheat, they own the system, they can debug uh, the uh, processes, the gate access to what they want. Did I ask, answer your question? Thank you for your presentation. Can you tell me your methodology? Uh, does it allow one uh, to protect oneself uh, from uh, data uh, spoofing? It's a server protocol that's going to be... So it's not just uh, memory-based data modification, but uh, rather packet-based uh, consideration and modification of data at this level. So in the implementation that we have been sharing with you here, well, perhaps this methodology can be modified. When you're saying about the transmission of this data from one entity to another entity, you can establish between them a security channel, a communication of this, keeping keys in both of these entities and encrypt the data as they're tra transmitted. Well, if the server uh, is sending clear text data, it's clear uh, the modified client uh, will gain access. Yes, I got, it. I got you. In this case, you need to encrypt the data on the server side, send them to the game, and then the game will be busy De, uh, decrypting it, so it's outside the scope of this methodology. No, no, I mean, what I say is that our methodology can be modified to accommodate that. It all depends on the level of protection you want to achieve. Of course, we're not saying that our protection uh, is uh, like 100%, that our anti-cheat offers you 100% protection. Of course, any motivated cheater will be able to hack it. The other question uh, is how much time they will need for that. Uh, so here, everything is based on the premise or on what tools you're going to use for obfuscation, for signing, if uh, these are uh, tools that are too difficult uh, to reverse engineer, then uh, you can provide a good level of protection. So. In this case, uh, the important thing is that nobody should uh, steal your key. Thank you. There's another question about MPX, the enclaves. The question is, uh, I'm not clear how to write the code for the enclaves, because as far as I understand, it, it should be isolated, it shouldn't have dependencies to a third-party module, do you need some special compiler for that, or how do you do that in real life? For instance, uh, somebody wants to implement the, that in a game. How to use that? Uh, I'm not quite clear in terms of uh, industrial development. Well, let me paraphrase. Th the name uh, for enclaves is SGX, Secure Guardian Extensions. So basically, it's just regular code. The only requirement to this code that it shouldn't contain instructions is just normal C code without instructions affecting uh, the, pro the processor mode, input-output, and there are some more restrictions. So it's clear that it's some code. But first thing that the compiler needs to uh, know how to link it, assemble it, uh, place it in a certain region of memory. Like, for instance, in studio, I don't know, AGX compiler today, 
uh, accepts any code compiled by a regular compiler. So it's a, s a special compiler. No, regular code compiled with a special compiler. With a, uh, uh, so it's a kind of a linker. No, it's just loading a special CPU mode that has special entry instructions. Uh, it's similar to calls. Well, I know how it looks in assembler, in the assembly language, but what to do with dynamic memory? Do you need to have a special heap for that? Or you can use the system heap for that? Uh, usual methods are supported for memory allocation within the enclave, as far as I know. The only restriction is that I think it's uh, 128 or 64 megabytes total for the system, so special API. No, no, no regular API. So I can't take some boost. Can I use a boost uh, in the uh, in a component that will be in SGX, or will I need to use some special memory allocator, some special libraries for that? If you're writing a code for uh, the enclave, you are using libc STL libraries that arrive together with the enclave. They're taken from a regular uh, SDL port and uh, FreeBSD, libc. So those functions have been modified that are not supported by the enclave, such as screen print and... But boost, no, you can't. Clear, thank you. Look, you are saying that you encrypt the data. The question is, what happens if I modify your code? I'll patch it in such a way that it's going to tell always that uh, the uh, section of the code that's being executed is always valid. It's a good question. Uh, I can add a small detail to the description of our methodology. Trusted code does not only does encryption and decryption, it also does some useful work. Something for the game some mathematical, something mathematical. So correspondingly, if uh, it all gets obfuscated, for instance, with an obfuscator uh, that generates a self-modifying uh, code, then, well, firstly, again, everything is based on the obfuscator that you use. If you are saying that you are always uh, going to return the OK uh, diagnosis, then uh, it's either you've done some reverse engineering of the code or you're just not ca calling the uh, trusted code having thrown it away. If you've thrown it away, uh, we derive uh, that this trusted code includes some useful com computing without which the game can't run. So it's worth uh, mentioning or guessing uh, that uh, the true code uh, should be ex executed. So therefore, you should change the true code. But uh, uh, true code cannot be disassembled. Uh, uh, you turning some returns, putting uh, zeros instead of ones. So that's basically it. So it's a good question. It's a good question. Yes, you need some useful uh, trusted codes, a valuable feature that would do something valuable for the game, so that without it, uh, the code, the, so that the game couldn't exist with this, without this module. May I ask you another question? Thank you for the presentation. I would also like uh, to know uh, about uh, the cheetah detection method. Uh, can you modify your anti-cheat tool so much so that it should identify the cheat during the game and block the game uh, if uh, it should happen? Uh, within this methodology, you can't. It just blocks uh, the work of the cheat. It becomes useless. To do what you want, you need uh, to use some uh, system-based features so to scan the system, and based on this information, you can get it. But otherwise, OK, thank you. Well, the only thing, we can uh, block the operation of art money. We can uh, notice uh, that's 
this is loss of integrity. But in this case, uh, nothing really happens. It's just passive. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I now request you uh, to pick two best questions, the one that you like the most, and award uh, presents uh, to their authors. We would like uh, to offer this gift to the lady, to Lida, thank you for the question. And to the gentleman with a question of what happens if we change the module, modify the module, so they should always return the OK statement. Thank you very much. Thank you.